Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman, and you're watching my channel. I am a public school teacher in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. I am on the rooftop of my school right now. It is very windy. It is very bright. And so while I would love to show you guys the beautiful mountains, I had to sort of take shade in the very middle of the rooftop using some shade of a tower. Um, yeah, so I'm up here. I'm not teaching classes. Mondays, which is today, is normally a very quiet day. But it's extra quiet. The students are doing exams. If you are coming to Taiwan to work as a public school teacher, uh, one thing that you will be pleasantly surprised with is that you will have uh, a good six days off every semester, maybe even more. Uh, not days off of work. Like you're supposed to come to work. I kind of came late today. No one said shit. But you'll have a good six days off where you will not have to do anything. No teaching classes. Um, you got to just chill out. The local teachers have to do some proctoring of the exams. They have to make sure, you know, and check the paperwork and whatnot. But as a foreign English teacher, both at my last school and at this school, I'm not expected to do anything. So I just sort of rolled in and uh, did a lot of chatting with my coworkers. Um, one of them, uh, who's really into Chinese calligraphy, she brought me a Chinese calligraphy set that the school had used in years pre prior when they had an international student uh, trying to learn how to draw Chinese characters. And so she sort of gave me a crash course. You can see that I have a lot of work to do based on my, my pretty poor work of the very easiest Chinese characters. One, E, which is just a straight line, and then R, two straight lines, and then San, three straight lines. Um, yeah, that is Chinese for one, two, three. Just one straight line, two straight lines, and three straight lines. I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, so so I, I did a little Chinese calligraphy, did a lot of gossiping, uh, talking drama with some people, uh, eating, napping. I do a lot of naps anyways. Uh, and then I just woke up from my nap, and the sunshine is too bright, so I'm hiding in the shade here talking to you guys because I have to find some way to productively spend my time. So why not give you guys a little more information about this exciting job of teaching English? And I'm not trying to be cynical. It is an exciting job. But there, you know, actually, the funny thing is, as nice as it is to get days off of teaching, my days are always so f much more full of joy when I am actually engaged with the students. Um, one of the nicest things about teaching is students. Uh, now, some teachers hate their students. Uh, some teachers, obviously, we can't love them all, um, but it is nice to be in contact with really uh, funny kids, lovely kids, strange kids that are very happy to see you every time you go there. Um, but not today, not today. Okay, I have a topic I want to talk about. So one thing is, and I've mentioned this in one of my videos prior. I, I mentioned in one video, I said, you know, your job as a foreign English teacher isn't necessarily to just improve their English. I mean, they want you to do that, obviously. You're an English teacher, but it is to promote the school, to make the school look good. That is one of the reasons they, that schools want a foreign English teacher is because it looks good on the school's, on the, on the school's resume, on, the school's pers on their profile. Uh, it looks good to have a foreign English teacher. It is something that attracts parents to the school. Um, I'm not exactly sure about the school situation where you live, but in Taiwan, Taiwan, like many developed countries, like many eight developed Asian countries, they have a declining birth rate. And so there's not as many kids uh, growing up these days. And depending upon where your school is located, your school may or may not be under a lot of pressure to recruit students. Uh, I was having lunch with the principal on Saturday I had this sort of this big presentation that I had to give um, to promote our school on a Saturday. Got paid extra, so no worries. And I actually like public speaking anyway, so 
great. You know, one of the cool things about this job is you get a lot of opportunities to shine and to do things that that you might like to do if you like public speaking, if you like performing, uh, which I do. Um, I got to do this presentation for parents and students about 30 minutes, and I, I called some some parents and students up to play some games, make everyone laugh, talked about how they can support their children's English education at home, talked about what ingredients go into making an English classroom successful, shared my experiences, and then I just I just decided to sing a whole new world. You know, I played Aladdin, my uh, partner in crime, Alice, uh, played Jasmine, we sang, and it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so that, that was my Saturday, and then after that, my principal took me out and treated me to a Vietnamese feast. My principal is a very vivacious woman named Lisa, and all of the best meals that I have had since coming to Kaohsiung have all been with Lisa. Uh, she knows good restaurants, and she orders up a smorgasbord of dishes. And so while eating, I wanted to pick her brain about these things that I'm being involved with. I'm doing a lot of promotion work. A couple of weeks ago, I went to an elementary school and met a bunch of kids to make them excited about joining our school. To, uh, Saturday, I did this huge presentation. And then next Saturday, sh she's taking me to another elementary school to do some more promotion work. So, um, so one of my, I think my biggest role is just to, is not only to make the students that we that are presently enrolled happy and to improve their English, but it is to attract students to come to our school because of that declining birth rate, because it, schools are competing for students, um, particularly schools that are away from the center of the city, schools that are uh, more rural, schools that are on the periphery of the city. And, um, I work at a school that is in the city of Kaohsiung, but it's on the it's on right next to Monkey Mountain. It's like not right dead in the center of the city, um, and it's perhaps just the demographics. Each area has got a demographic. So, if your school is in a in an area where there's a lot of old people, not a lot of young families, then obviously there's not going to be a lot of students. And I mentioned um, previously in another video that I went to this amazing junior high school that's got uh, international international quality rock climbing uh, course, several courses. Um, they hosted a huge international rock climbing contest years ago. It was such a beautiful school in the mountains uh, reminded me of summer camp and most of the classrooms were closed were shuttered and they're just struggling to stay open when i was at my last school up in taoyuan which was in the city of taoyuan a, a school that has a, a good reputation a well above average in performance of test scores which is you know one of the main things that parents are considering is what is can this school help my child get a higher test score to get into a better high school, to get into a better university, right? To get have a better life. Um, this school, I guess, previously, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or whatever, was about to close. And everyone had, teachers had to bust their asses. Um, the principal really pushed them and they turned it around. And now that school is thriving. So that's what our school is currently, you know, we're, trying everyone's trying to bust their ass to to make this school better attract more of the principals doing all sorts of stuff putting in solar panels knocking down walls uh beautifying the beautifying the school school in in many ways because as she said to me it's not so easy to move the metrics of the test scores it's not so easy to suddenly just raise the test scores um that's of course a, a main project but uh, she's trying to improve it in many, many other ways. And one of them is by having a foreign English teacher, by having him go do speeches and give talks. Yeah, so I guess that's just one of a couple topics, quick ones, um, to sort of kill the boredom of my day. And to give you guys some information is one, you will have a lot of free days, like I'm currently having right now, where you don't have much to do because the students are doing exams. Um, so what are you going to do? You could prepare lessons. Uh, or you can make YouTube videos and do Chinese calligraphy like me. And another, another thing, there's a huge promotional aspect 
of the job of being a foreign English teacher. That's one of the reasons they like dressing you up in costumes and making you dance, which apparently at my last school this year, I heard through the rumor mill that one teacher had a hissy fit and like sort of didn't go. Anyways, I'm on the rooftop. I hope I just heard some noise over there. I hope no one has locked me on the roof. Uh, I'm not even probably supposed to be here, but I just come up here because I I work at this school. Every, like, you know, a lot of my a lot of my week I'm at the school and I'm always finding new rooms, new places, like rooms with cool weight sets and fish tanks and like there's a there's a lot more I got to do to explore this school. Um, and there's a lot more I got to do to explore this town and this country. It's like, this is my second year teaching English in Taiwan. And I'm, you know, people ask me, how long are you going to be here? And, you know, sometimes I do miss America. Sometimes I do want to go home. Uh, home. I want to go back to my homeland, you know. Uh, but I still feel like there's a lot more I want to see and do on this island and I don't want to just skitter off before I have really, really immersed myself deeper. Um, buying a scooter was, was a huge step. I'm, I'm feeling more, more and more integrating with this country, with the scooter, with the things and the activities that I'm doing with my coworkers. One of the things I love being a, a foreign English teacher at a high school, junior high school, where there's no other foreigners. It's like I'm totally immersed in this in this Taiwanese world, you know, which can be a little difficult sometimes. You know, I don't have the camaraderie of having other foreigners uh, to just sort of live in our bubble like what happens at some other schools. But I, I really do like soaking up this culture. And today, um, you know, just having some of them talk to me, you know, they, they speak in, in Chinese and then one of them who's good at English will translate, just talking about really cool stuff. You know, as we're doing Chinese calligraphy, a woman said, if your child is born on the full moon festival, a month after the full moon, they'll like shave off the child's hair and they'll, they'll use that child's hair to make a pen, uh, a brush to for Chinese calligraphy because that's like magic hair uh, uh, some uh, some other really cool stuff like they really have a deep culture here even these very sophisticated teachers who have master's degrees and doctorates really hold on to their culture and I really thought that was awesome uh, that is awesome um, yeah and uh, yeah so I will show you kind of sort of some shots of the rooftop um, as I'm talking, so hopefully you guys will get a, a sense of how kind of cool this the area of my high school is right next to this monkey mountain. By the way, I was at the beach on Saturday doing some jujitsu. My jujitsu gym decided as a special occasion we would do jujitsu at the beach. So I'm down at the beach doing some jujitsu. It was awesome. Uh, the water was warm. I mean, it wasn't warm, warm, but it was very pleasant to go in the ocean in November um, because apparently the water comes from the south so it's really it's it's coming in warm and um, and I'm leaving the beach after this long day of doing jiu-jitsu having such a nice time it's so beautiful and I have to go through this tunnel by this very famous university to get to the train to get back to my apartment and I see this monkey just run out and grab a lady's uh, tea out of her hand and then another monkey started following me and was looking at my bag and it was like and I was like damn dude it's kind of crazy to be stalked by a monkey I told him to go away and he wouldn't go away he kept following me yeah so it's kind of a crazy life here not too crazy pretty sane most of the time but sometimes just sort of fun to be in this exotic environment that Still has uh, lots of conveniences. Anyways, my name's Ryan Freeman. It's very windy. I'm on the rooftop, and I'm going to go back down to my office. I will see you next time. If you have any questions or comments, put it down below. I will see you later. Bye-bye.